Namayingo district in the far eastern part of Uganda stands as a stark example of the marginalization faced by remote and isolated communities. The district, comprising 13 islands surrounded by the tranquil waters of Lake Victoria, is picturesque but conceals significant social and health challenges, especially for the adolescent girls and young women living there. Statistics gives me 52 landing sites that this district has, around eight sub-counties, three town councils, three zero six villages, 50 parishes and wards. That is a summary of this district. Previous statistics was giving me around 42,000 households. Central to this discussion is the alarming rise in HIV infection rates and the ongoing struggles with limited access to health services and education. Out of the 13 habitable islands, uh, only six, only eight islands have health facilities, and the others do not have health facilities. So the, the issue here is that uh, implementation of health services in the islands is very costly, very expensive. And the allocation formula of resources for government is the same. The health center here on the mainland, the health center in the waters get the same allocation. And for us as a district, we really have that as a very big challenge because the health center in the islands to program and go for an outreach, it's very expensive. They need to fuel a boat and fuel is very expensive. So they can't afford it to do two outreaches, for instance. An outreach that they do, uh, uh, one outreach in the island can do uh, six outreaches on the mainland. Uh, essential health services is challenged not only in the, the mainlands of this district, the islands of this district, but even on the mainland. Because ideally, every sub county is supposed to have a health center uh, uh, three, but we still have sub counties that are still. Uh, struggling and so when we come we talk of accessibility to health services and then also the young you majorly the young people these health centers first of all are supposed to be youth friendly we do not have youth friendly corners in these health centers and in fact entirely there is no health center that has youth friendly corners so even the policy of government of saying each sub counter with the health center three is not applicable in especially the island communities of this district. Despite various government efforts to uplift these communities, the reality on ground is far from ideal. And what's worrying us most is that uh, we have, we are picking some positive, uh, more positive cases from the younger population. And yet they are the ones who are not accessing our services the way we know we need them too. And the one of the some of the reasons why we even have babies delivered when they are HIV positive. For some of these girls who, who, who get HIV, they don't come for antenatal, they would they don't we don't manage them closely and also deliver children who are HIV. At Sigulu Health Center three, teenage pregnancy is very common. Out of hundred percent, if I count in percentages, you find that the seventy are teenage pregnancies. The main cause of this teenage pregnancy, according to we as leaders, it has been this issue of disk matanga. You know, here there is a tendency that when somebody dies, they go to a real function. People go and dance at night, they collect money up past night. So people, people, people those girls, younger girls, that's how they are getting pregnancies. These concerns are echoed by the senior probation and social welfare officer, Vulam Gonza who works closely with the affected communities. Most of these young boys and girls also don't concentrate because of moving for, with the, the fishermen from one place to another. The health workers have had to resort to peer educators to reach the areas they do not access easily. We, health workers, those ones who, for us who are on the government here, we come, we just have to do our work from here mainly. 
But those ones, those peers have at least helped us to go in the villages, spread the, info, spread the information about the like, uh, dangers of HIV. Uh, at the same time, they have helped us here mainly counseling. Uh, those peers at the same time, actually, they have helped us to integrate most of the things here. At Even some days back, we were with some NGO which was uh, trying to address those issues. But when we talked of the transport, how to get these mothers, they said we cannot do it. Let the sub-county people, maybe the sub-county LOC3 and the sub-county chief organize and help these people in case there is any problem which needs transport because they cannot do anything. In our public health centers, we do not have youth-friendly corners. We have enough space, but uh, we, we lack shelters for these people. Education is another critical area where young people living on the islands face significant challenges. The 13 habitable islands of three sub-counties have only one post-primary school uh, as a secondary school. The others do not have secondary schools. So girls who graduate after peace and have nowhere to go. Many families cannot afford to send their children to schools on the mainland leaving the girls vulnerable to early pregnancies and the socio-economic constraints that come with dropping out of school. Organizations like the Center for Health, Human Rights and Development, CERHAD, continue to document experiences of young people on the islands and emphasize the importance of awareness in addressing the crisis. When you go to Lore Island, they don't have a government secondary school there. So that means as a girl, if I finish my primary education, the next thing that will happen is for her to get into marriage. Since she's not getting the SRHR information and services, we are going to have repetitive pregnancies that are not controlled, that are, man are not managed. And you find a girl at 20 years with four children, no economic activity, no, um, no qualification, and that means she cannot take care of the family well. The Assistant Commissioner for Children and Youth Affairs in the Ministry of Gender, Labor and Social Development, Mondo Chateka, acknowledges the gaps in service delivery and stresses the importance of coordinated efforts to bridge these gaps. We have had a Chilean task. People are still indoctrinated by their cultural and religious dogmas. And so we thought that by now, we would have the sexuality education guidelines for out of schools, but uh, we have failed to meet the Catholics. The president on 18th of uh, August 2023 launched a program. The program is called the Uganda UN Joint Adolescent and Youth Program. Mm. It's focusing on issues to do with sexuality, employability, productivity climate change and climate management, and a host of other things. Okay. And so it's one of the steps towards ensuring that uh, as government we are able to deliver. And this program is a joint program, Uganda government and 13 UN agencies. Then we have the Minister of Health, Minister of Education, Minister of Local Government, Minister of Water and Environment, we have the justice and law uh, order sector, and all these are coming together to be able to deliver one. So we are not blind to the fact that um, there is a challenge. Member of Parliament for Soroti City, Jonathan Ebualu, emphasizes the need for increased budget allocations to marginalized regions like Lolwe. If government was careful and sensitive, trimmed down on the wasteful expenditure, that would be able that money would be able to be taken to our national economy and particularly on the health and education of our children. Statistics from Jinja Regional Referral Hospital show that the burden of teenage pregnancy in Busoga region is on the rise, currently at 18.8%, up from 18.4% in 2023. Namayengo District takes the lead at 26%, followed by Bujiri at 20.5%, Mayuge, 20%, Luka, 20%, Buyende, 19.2%, Bugweri, 19.1%, Kaliro, 19.1%, Kamuli, 17.8%, and Iganga, 
with 17.4%. Walter Mwesi J, NTV.